We are adventure happy and we are once again in Kananaskis, Spray Lakes Reservoir where we're gonna be doing a little car camping and trying to bag some cool little day hikes on the way. I'm Evan. I'm Danny. Kazi's back there. We are adventure happy and we are once again in Kananaskis. We are currently driving down the Three Sisters Parkway on our way to Spray Lakes Reservoir where we're gonna be doing a little car camping. We've got a uh, nice little three day weekend so we're gonna try to knock off a few of the good early season hikes that can be found in Kananaskis and uh, some of the really popular ones that we've haven't done before. So. Yeah, here's a look at one of them, uh, East End of Rundle, or Eeyore as it's commonly known. And there's the other one over there, that's Hauling Peak. So we are planning on tagging both of those at some point this weekend as well as a third uh, spot. Uh, Old Gold Glacier, which is kind of right by our campground. We're staying at the Spray Lakes West campground this weekend. Doing some car camping. Yeah, doing some car camping, making it easy on ourselves. Got ourselves a little long weekend. So, yeah, figured we'd take advantage and come on down here and spend some time in the cold and rain, <laughs> possibly snow. There's the end of the paved part of the road. Get a little bumpy from here on out, so I'll probably put the camera away until we uh, get to camp. We're gonna go to the campsite, we're gonna get everything set up, and then we're gonna backtrack. And uh, yeah, try to knock off one of these hikes this afternoon, because it's only about 11 o'clock right now. So. Should be a good day. Should be a good weekend. For sure. To get to our campground, uh, we're staying at Spray Lakes West Campground. We have to cross the Spray Lakes Reservoir Dam. Hydro plant down there. No flow. Reservoir looks really low right now. Mm -hmm, it certainly does. Beat on the snow melt, I guess. The little pockets of snow up there. There's a pretty, uh, pretty deep snow here, so I think that it's gonna fill up. Campground manager and firewood sales. Okay, do we register here? Then? I don't know. Let's find out. I guess. So we just stopped and chatted with the campground manager for a sec. She told us that the campground is six kilometers long, with sites sort of all along there. We're gonna drive the length of it and try to find a nice looking spot, I guess. And then uh, fill out the registration and get everything all set up, grab some lunch. And then we'll probably head back and uh, try to bag Hauling Peak this afternoon. Fun? Yeah. Gosley's excited? Yeah. You hear your name. <laughs> I think he's excited to get out of his pen. Probably true. I think this is home for tonight. Can I drive back in? Yeah. Whatever. Just pull off to the side there, it's fine. Yeah, that's good. So, good amount of space, nice and flat. A lot of the sites we saw that were closer down to the water were very uh, 
had very steep slopes on them. So we got a nice flat area here for getting set up. Lots of trees, so good coverage. Should be easy to set up the big tarp so that we can have a nice dry spot to hang out. Not the greatest views in the world, but there's a path going right down to the water right there. So, hey, I think this will work just fine. Yeah, I think so too. Cool. Well, we're gonna start getting everything unloaded. And... Jacket. Yeah, it's kind of chilly out here. It's only like nine degrees and cloudy, and feels like it's gonna rain on us. So. And funny thing, it was like 32 degrees in Edmonton yesterday, and I was dying. Yeah. <laughs> that summer in Alberta. All right, let's free the pup. It's kind of like this. So we uh, set up camp real quick and backtrack to the hauling parking area, which you can see is just nut bar, even on a weekday at one o'clock. Definitely not going to be alone on this hike, but that's okay. It is one of the most popular ones in the area because it's kind of super easy to get to and steep and short, short and pretty. So. Quality parking jobs that people have done here. Oh yeah, excellent, excellent work for sure. Right, here we go. You can see the parking area for all laying down behind me there. You can see how many cars are in it, which is pretty impressive for one o'clock on a weekday. I mean it is Friday, but it's not like it's a long weekend or anything. We took the day off, but I figure most people are at work today. So Hauling, just a uh, about three kilometers I think to the top, but fairly steep, over 700 meters of elevation. Gives you some great views looking down at the at Canmore and the Bow Valley. Should be a nice little hike. We went and hit up uh, Spray Lakes West and set up our camp first. Had a little lunch. Get bored. <laughs> it dumped rain on us while we were setting up. Uh, but, hey, that's gonna happen. People look at me like I'm a crazy person. I'm standing here talking to myself. Cosley's getting all excited, tangled up. We might let him off leash a little bit later as it gets a little steeper if he's behaving, but we'll see. Yeah, should be a nice little, nice little jaunt. Good way to get the blood flowing. I've been looking forward to this one. Yeah, it is sort of one of those famous Canmore area hikes. So something that we've been meaning to do for a while, so seems like a good time to do it. Yeah, why not? Yeah, anyways, we're gonna get moving. So this is what the trails look like so far. Pretty much just a steady incline. A couple of sweet, steep switchbacks, but mostly pretty straightforward. Cosley, this way. Dog keeps trying to get off of the trail. It's an interesting tree. I guess that happens to a bunch of the pine trees in this area. It's... The trail's been really busy so far. Probably passed a good 15, 20 people heading down already. There's one group of two girls in behind us on the way up. <laughs> passed a couple of uh, funny group of bros who were hiking with beers in their hand and they were clearly just piss tanked <laughs> which hey good on you I guess if you want to go out and have some fun on a Friday afternoon and uh, get some exercise while you're doing it I don't usually like to hike drunk although you know I am not opposed to a celebratory beer at the top of a mountain, or especially once you make camp for the night. Cosley, this way. Come on. 
because he's having a hard time sticking to the trail. He really wants to go explore Cosley. Come on. Let's go. Making pretty good progress already. View's opening up a little bit, or it looks like another weather system might be rolling in here. Let's see the parking area way down there where we came from originally. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know, what, a third of the way up? I didn't check the GPS. Been hiking for about half an hour. Yeah. Cause he's getting so much love on the trail. So much love. I think every group we pass wants to stop and pet him. He's just eating it up. Big, big softy that he is. So, yeah. Fun time so far. Really looking forward to getting up to the top and seeing the views because I think it's going to be pretty awesome. Hopefully the skies don't open up on us again just yet. abandoned wheelbarrow <laughs> probably from when they were building the trail up here in the 90s <laughs> there's a bunch of sabotage actually that happened while they were trying to build this trail I guess certain groups of locals like the old route which is pretty much a scree scramble all the way up a gully apparently um, <laughs> so to try to stop the Canmore trail builders from improving the trail and making the one we're on now, people would like steal their equipment. So one of the uh, wheelbarrows went missing. <laughs> the RCMP got called in and uh, they found it with some people in Canmore. They said that they just thought some hikers had abandoned it along the way. Which, I don't know, I don't really buy because who goes hiking with a wheelbarrow? <laughs> I mean, I guess it's not that different than uh, pulling a sled in the winter, right? Might be easier. Huh. Maybe I have to try that sometime. Probably not. <laughs> Just gonna stop for a second when the sun's out because this storm just kind of not really a storm, but the rain, light rain and clouds and a little bit of snow just sort of passed over us. We're kind of, I don't know, maybe 500 meters behind, below the uh, summit ridge. Cause these ants to get going. So we're gonna keep moving here, but just in case this other cloud bank moves in by the time we get to the top, I want to be able to show a little bit of a view. I think we're gonna be okay though. I think we're gonna get up there and uh, have a little bit of visibility. Either way, I'll show you when we get to the top. <laughs> uh, we're kind of just below the saddle in between Miner's Peak and Hauling Peak. It's kind of snowing up. I don't know if you can see that or not, but the snowflakes are coming up from down below. Interesting. Oh, Cosley just can't help himself but wrapping himself around my legs when we stop. So we made the saddle. Just a little hall in. Right between the hallways and the Valley with Canmore in below us. Easy cause. Okay. It is a fairly steep drop, so you know, trying to keep the dog from pulling me off the edge of the cliff. Okay, he's saying something I can't even hear, so I'm sure you won't be able to. <laughs> oh. ah, beautiful look, even from here. I can't wait to get up there. This is where we're heading next. All the ridge up a hallway. If the wind doesn't blow us away. <laughs> Danny's sharp eyes are spotting fossils. It's 
cool. Some old shell from way back when these rocks were melted before. Ugh. What do you think so far? Thumbs up. Yeah, man. All right, let's push on to the top. Hopefully, we still get some sunshine when we get up there. Is it just me, or are you a little worried about the fact that this wind is coming from the direction of our camp with how our tent blew away last time? <laughs> I hadn't thought about it until just now. Yeah. I'm sure it's fine. It's pretty secluded down there. Lots of trees. Yeah. We might be driving home tonight. Yeah, I hope not. How's it like to do? And he's taking the last couple of steps up towards the summit. It's a really nice step over here from the door. Yeah. Oh, he's kind of ask us. It's a great cross over here. You can follow this ridge all the way over there, but it requires some pretty technical scrambling. But you can't get down the summit right there from where we are right now. Not too nice today. Tied the cause dog off just on this sign here. Please do not throw rocks over the edge. That's very um, important advice in the area that we're in because there are people who climb the face just over the ridge here, which we're going to show you now. Because we made it. Kazi, just relax, buddy. Sorry, man. a look at the Bow Valley and the beautiful town of Canmore. Oh my god. That is awesome. <laughs> you can see a little steeper coming down this edge. <laughs> there are some, you know, legit climbing routes up there. So, yeah, make sure you don't throw anything off the edge. There could be people climbing up below you. Oh my god. Awesome. Great way to shake the rust off. Get out for a short little hike. <laughs> oh, awesome. So, started working our way down. We were originally going to go over and uh, hike the as well, but another weather system is blown in. This time with hail. And with that wind, it stings a little when it catches you. <laughs> so we're gonna head down for some cover, I guess. I'll have to come back and do French Peak another day. This time next year. This is a really nice uh, early season. Early season hike. Yeah, for now, we'll start working our way down. down from the summit there, really picked up. Oh, so we're just ducking in behind these trees for a second, having a quick little snack, and we'll get moving again. Would you like some candy? Mm, piece of candy. Thank you. Nice view at the top, eh? So amazing. Let's see why that hike is so popular. That was a good early season. Warm your legs so, uh, up for the year, sort of hike. Popular in the winter. Mm -hmm. Cool. Although I don't know that I'd want to be on this piece, but it's icy hmm. and it's windy. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Do what you gotta do, I guess. Yeah. If you have the right stuff. Well. Okay. I'm gonna keep moving, I guess. I guess so. And just like that, we are back at the trailhead. Especially just like that for you guys, because I didn't really film anything on the way down. Pretty uneventful. I mean, Cosley tried to kill me, he, like, yanked me off my feet on some slippery rocks. He's but, nice like that. yeah. Other than that, can't blame him too much. He was pretty excited. He'll be a tired, tired puppy. For sure. 
is great to get out. I think that um, this place would be a nightmare if you did it on a Saturday or a Sunday. Because we saw a bunch of people as it was and it's Friday. Yeah, so, and we started Friday at like 1 o'clock. Something 1 like that. Yeah. Ah, should be a good evening. Yeah, I hope it stays nice. Um, it could definitely go either way. It's going to be a great night no matter what. But it would be nice if it's not snowing and miserable. Yeah. I think in general, I prefer it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll be back at camp before you know it. And then uh, on to tomorrow. Hopefully a uh, whole nother adventure to do. So this is Spray Lakes Reservoir. This is just down the path from our campsite. It's about 6.30. Nice and sunny. Danny's just starting to get dinner going. Just finished getting camp set up the way we want to. Cosley had his dinner already, so I figured I'd take him down to the shore to take care of some business and to just show you guys the view. So yeah, we can't really see this from our campsite, but it's like a one minute walk. So, not bad at all. Probably come down here tomorrow morning and uh, have some coffee if the sun's out. Give the dog a little bit of freedom. Run around a little. I wanted to let him off leash a little bit more today. We left him on the whole time. He was pulling quite a bit. And the trail was pretty busy, so I didn't want him getting into any shenanigans or bothering people too much. Try to be considerate. He's a good dog, all in all, but he is still a puppy. And he likes to play, and he doesn't realize yet that some people don't, so. He had fun today. So did we. Hauling is a perfect early season hike. Some real mild scrambling right at the end there, but just, uh, I think it's about, we did just over seven kilometers total. 800 feet of total elevation gain, or 800 meters, I should say, of total elevation gain. So, yeah, it was a good little, good little jaunt for sure. Got some exercise and got me excited for tomorrow's trip up to the Old Goat Glacier, which actually we leave right from this camping area. The trailhead is maybe a couple minutes from our from our campsite. Cosley! Come here! Come! Good boy. That's kind of half-hearted. <laughs> but he's coming. So you'll still get a treat for that if he comes all the way. Yeah. Hey, buddy. Hi. Oh, good puppy. Cosley. Cosley. Sit. Good boy. Nice down here, eh? Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, just gonna walk the dog a little bit more and then head back up to our campsite. So, we'll check in there. Danny's camp chefing it up over here. Taco in a bag. <laughs> nice surprise to come home, to come back to after my walk with Cosley. Nice hot. <coughs> meal so healthy obviously since it's a bag of Doritos with taco stuff on it but hey we, we burned some calories today I think we can we can do this 
Mm. All right. That was it. Super healthy. There's lettuce in it. Oh, good. It's like a salad. Mm -hmm. Sweet. It's yummy. I'm pretty much vegetarians. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here's a look at camp. Had our dinner. Got the fire going. jumbo size cheapo tarp <laughs> set up so that we've got a nice dry place to hang out if the rain starts coming. Did a line across here and slap Cosley to it so that he can wander back and forth and get into mischief. Got a tent set up over here. It's the Sierra Designs Convert 3. And that's just the road over there. So you can kind of see the lake through the trees there. But uh, yeah, this is sort of the most scenic of the campsites along this road. But we figured we'd err on the side of having too much protection just because it is supposed to drop down to below zero and snow a little bit tonight. So. All of the stuff that you end up bringing with you when you go car camping. I gotta say, I do like the simplicity of backcountry because it makes me just pack everything I need into one bag as opposed to bringing an entire mountain of firewood. <laughs> but, hey. But you know what you get with car camping? What's that? Beer. That's true. What you drinking? Something. Bowen Island. Some kind of IPA. Bowen Island. Bowen Island IPA. This one? Yeah. Cosley's as far away from the fire as you can get. Yeah, that's the end of the line for him. I guarantee within the next 10 minutes he gets himself wrapped around that tree until he can't move. <laughs> Yeah. Sit by the fire, have some dessert. Yeah. Have some hot drinks. Sounds great. Probably going to be a relatively early night because I didn't sleep all that well last night. And, you know, we did a little something something today to tire ourselves out. But we have all this wood that we need to go through tonight. Uh, I feel like that can last for the weekend. It's best if it lasts for the weekend. Because another thing that I like better about backcountry camping versus front country camping is it doesn't cost so damn much money for $26 a night for a campsite and $10 a bundle for firewood. So... Plus there's more food that we end up bringing and buying. Yeah. Maybe it's just because we've already bought all of our backcountry food already. That's probably part of it, yeah. I didn't do a great job with this tarp. It's going to be flapping quite loudly. Oh, well. Get guys a job done if you need it. Yep. Cool. You did a nice job with this fire, though. Yeah, that's burning quite nicely already. Yeah. So, what was your favorite part of today? Getting to the top of the hill right now. Yeah. The view from up there is pretty awesome. Dangled my feet to... over the edge. Danny had a little heart attack while I was doing it. I left and went and hugged the dog <laughs> because I couldn't watch him do it. I'm afraid of heights and the fact that I got to the top and looked down, stood there, and didn't have a panic attack was a huge thing. Yeah, you did awesome. So did the dog. Cosley was a, a champ as usual. He doesn't have any kind of. He's not afraid of heights. He's only afraid of the fire. Seems to be. I meant to do a little history lesson on hauling when we were up at the top, but it was busy up there, so I didn't. Uh, I didn't go into it. So the name Hauling Peak is fairly new. I want to say mid nineties, late nineties, when they, they officially named it Hauling. So. The name comes from a cook 
who works in a hotel in Canmore. Someone bet him 50 bucks. He couldn't make it from downtown Canmore to the top of Holland Peak uh, and back in 10 hours. And so they gave him a flag to plant at the summit to prove that he made it, but he was back in six hours. So everyone called shenanigans. They said, there's no way, no way you could have made it up there and back. Oh my god, this smoke is driving me insane. But it's nice, it keeps the mosquitoes away. Um, so he went back up the next day. This time he brought some people with him. Sure enough, the flag was planted at the summit where it should have been. But they also put in a, uh, a new flag that was like 12 feet tall. You could actually see it from downtown Canmore. <laughs> um, yeah, so Hauling was the first person sort of credited with uh, speed ascent of, of the peak. Now, it still remained unnamed for a long time until someone thought appropriate um, commemoration of that achievement would be to call it Chinaman's Peak. So they put that in as the official name, and yeah, it was actually the official name, I think, from the late 70s to the mid-90s. In the 90s, a uh, group of, um, in the 90s, some Chinese businessmen lived in Canmore, Calgary, and said, hey, that's kind of offensive. So they started a petition to get the name changed. And, uh, they officially changed the name to Haoling Peak, although I guess there was still some locals who refuse to, to go by that, so if you're hanging out in Canmore, you might still hear Chinaman's Peak every once in a while. <laughs> so. I'm not the most PC guy in the world, so whatever. Whatever works. I like the name Hauling Peak because it's fun to say. It, it is. It's got a nice ring to it, for yeah. sure. And you got to give the guy credit. From Canmore to the peak and back in six hours is pretty... Pretty impressive. We did so. it in, what, four up and back? Or three and a half up three and Three and a half, I think. Um, and that's from where we parked, which is probably still another, mm, I want to say, 14 kilometers from, maybe not quite that far, eight kilometers from uh, downtown Canmore. Yeah, so. Good job, Paul Ling. You earned it, man. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, anyways, so that's the history. We're just going to be hanging out here for the rest of the night, having uh, our tasty beverages. Probably going to call it a night pretty early because, you know, we're lame like that. <laughs> and, um, yeah, eventually I'm probably going to get annoyed with the wind, so. Um, and to give us credit, um, so it's this light, and it's... Yeah, it looks like it's like 3 in the afternoon, I'm sure, on the video right now. It's not. No, it's 8.30. Um, so if we're up until 10, it'll still be pretty light out. Yeah, that's true. Um, because we're in Alberta, and it stays light out in the summer until like 10.30 or 11. Yeah. Hmm. Alright, well, thanks for coming along for the, uh, trip up Hauling today, guys. And, um, stay tuned tomorrow. We've got Old Goat Glacier coming up. Should be fun. Good night. This right here is one of the beautiful things about front country camping. Bacon. It smells so good. This frying pan was a gift from my dad. Found an old beat up frying pan somewhere, cast iron. Yeah, hand whittled a new handle for it and then just sort of scraped it down and re seasoned it so that it's perfectly beautiful patina and pretty much non stick. So.
still working pretty good for our, uh, our campware. I think that's going to be our go-to for now when we uh, do this sort of stuff. Because it just, the cast iron spreads the heat so much evenly, much more evenly than uh, a lightweight, like aluminum frying pan. So when you're dealing with these ridiculous stoves that just have huge hot spots, it, it helps to spread it out a little bit. Obviously not something you're going to bring backpacking, because I think the frying pan weighs about three pounds, but uh, for a car camping, it's perfect for cooking bacon and eggs in. How'd you sleep? Yeah. yeah? Why? Yeah. I thought you were all toasty and warm in your game. I was all warm. I wasn't cold. Yeah. Probably because I don't usually sleep well the first night anymore. Yeah. Well. He has all sorts of this mm -hmm. That's alright. We got something we can do about that. Getting his energy out? Yep. Yeah. Take him hiking. Yeah. Should help. Yeah. There we go. Breakfast of champions. Bacon and egg McMuffins. Some coffee. Oh yeah, this is going to be good. Pets on leash. Jack, pick up after your pet. If we have to, but he took a big dumper before we left, so hopefully we won't need to. Right, buddy? All right, so day two, we are getting on the trail, uh, heading up towards Old Goat Glacier. It's supposed to be a nice little stroll, uh, only about eight kilometers return, but it's got some nice glacier views at the top. Uh, some optional little scrambling bits and things like that you can do when we get up there so we'll see how we're feeling it's a little drizzling and kind of chilly so it's nice to be out moving for sure instead of just sitting around camp being cold there's old goat creaking below us there it's actually a second trail down there I think that actually leads to the road and there's a second trailhead. I think we'll walk back along the creek just to, to see where it comes out. Yeah, I guess this trail is just gonna follow the bank for most of the way. Oh, we're on camera. Hi. Filming you. Filming me. I see a lot of those trail cameras along the along the way in Kananaskis. First look up into the cloud-covered valley where we're headed. It's been nice and gentle so far. A lot of roots that we have to dodge, and the trail's kind of muddy because it's been raining for a few days now. But we've got the place to ourselves. There was one other car in the parking lot when we pulled up, but uh, the guy who was driving it was just getting back as we were leaving, so. We are the only people out here, I think. Oh wow, it's starting to get kind of pretty. It's our first look. At Old Goat Falls. And a uh, decent looking little avalanche field below it. You can see trees and stuff sticking out of it. No, that's really nice. Cause they found his snow as per usual. Just playing. It snowed the best? Yeah. This valley is really pretty. Even in the. Uh, 
even in the fog, the clouds, the snow coming down a little bit. Oh, that's been a really nice hike so far. So I think we're gonna work our way up a little bit, see if we can get a closer look. Looks like there's a trail heading off this way also. <laughs> King of the mountain. Calls it posing all nice. Came out onto the avalanche field a little bit. A nice view of the waterfall anyways, disappearing under the snow that we're standing on. Very nice. Might try to find a way up onto this ridge here too. So get a look down from the top. Cosley, come here. Good thing that he's nice and light. <laughs> Don't worry about him going through. Oh, yeah. It's snowing. Yeah. What do you think? This is cool. Yeah, very nice. <laughs> Don't want to fall in there. <laughs> Cosley and Danny hanging out down below me there on the snow field. We started working our way up on the right of the waterfall to gain this ridge. Oh, uh, things are getting pretty greasy with the snow falling, so I'm not going to push it much further, I don't think. Oh, the view of the waterfall from here. It's quite nice. I would like to come back, actually, when the conditions are a little bit nicer, a little bit, uh, a little bit safer. I don't have any sort of traction assistance, so like the snow is a little sketchy, and uh, the rocks up here are quite slippery. Although it's not too bad, we're kind of our way up here. There's good handholds and stuff, but uh, we don't want to push too hard for uh, anything too crazy. Although I think up on top of that ridge, looking at the waterfall, like the main chunk of the waterfall coming down, would be pretty awesome. Huh, yeah. Uh, be a trip for another time, I guess. Okay, so from where you gained the valley, where we came in, there's the waterfall up that way. And then there's this band of trees over here. And there's a faint trail with a couple of cairns heading over this way. And this is where you actually gain the trail to head up towards Old Goat Glacier. So I don't think we're going to go up to the glacier just because it's looking pretty slippery we don't have any traction assistance or anything um, but we want to at least go see the trailhead and scope it out the trail runs up here somewhere I think the official trail is actually sort of underneath this snow right now when you get up to this ridge yeah loop around to the top of it and I think you can follow that all the way up to the valley where the glacier is Hmm. Doesn't look too bad now that we're standing underneath it. it looks very steep from far away. It looks pretty gentle here. What do you think? Let's see what it's like. I need to put on a different another layer though before that one just Okay. Do what you gotta do. Once we got up underneath it, it looked a lot less steep than it did from across the valley. So we're gonna push on a little bit and uh, see what we can find. Worth trying anyways. I post hold once on this snow so far. So, but otherwise it's been pretty sturdy. I don't think it'll be too bad. Ooh. Yeah, so we're just gonna follow this snow pack all the way up till we get around that bend. And uh, see what it looks like up there. Use my trekking pole and you know, pay attention to what I'm doing. Danny's working her way up the snow belt. 
nice thing about the snow is it makes it really easy to get up on top of this giant boulder I'm standing on because the uh, snow just comes right up to the base of it. <sighs> Get a good look back across the way at the waterfall. A couple of people we saw working their way back down. Not sure where the other two ended up. <sighs> ah, so we cut across after the big boulder and found a little semblance of a trail here. So we're gonna start following this up for a bit and see what it looks like at the top of that ridge. Oh, there's our first look up into the valley where the glacier sits. Not that you can see anything because it's pretty snowing pretty hard right now. The visibility is next to nothing. The trail's completely whited out. And it's slippery as shite. So, so might be time for us to start working our way back down. Unfortunately, it's just getting a little bit sketchy. And yeah, Danny's not having much fun on the slippery bit. On the slippery bits. And uh, yeah, like I said before, we don't really have anything to help with the traction. Um, so since we've completely lost the trail at this point, it's probably time to turn around, start working our way back down. Because even if we get up there, we're not going to be able to see much. Bummer. Oh well. Live to fight another day. Sure accumulated a lot of snow since our way up. Doesn't look like it's going to be letting up anytime soon either. Nice, heavy, wet, sticky snow. Trail's a little bit harder to follow on the way back. But not too bad. cold and wet now, so we're seriously considering just heading home once we get back to camp. I mean, we'd obviously be okay. We can make a fire, we can stay dry, we've got nice warm sleeping bags to sleep in, so But, that's not to say we wouldn't be more comfortable at home in our bed. We'll play it by ear, see how bad it is at the campsite when we get back. But we are pretty close to the campsite, so I imagine it's snowing just as much there as it is here. Well, we made it back to the car. You can see that it's snowing a little bit. <laughs> it's probably a solid three inches of accumulation already. Good thing we bought a tent that can handle snow load. It's like super heavy, wet, sticky snow too. It is miserable out there. Yep, it we're in the car with our seat warmers on and the heater on and the dog's already asleep and I don't want to move. Yeah, we wanted a nice dry warm place to uh, have lunch and dry off a little bit. And then it's decision making time, I guess, as far as whether we want to pack it in 
think that's the plan. I think so too. I mean, yeah, our tent can handle snow load, but I don't it's really want to test it. And <laughs> it would mean that we would have to just like hang out in the snow all afternoon too. Yeah, that's the big thing for me. It's just like it's so wet. It'd be like nine hours of sitting under the tarp by the fire, trying to stay warm. When I'm already like soaked through, it's not an ideal situation. So, in the uh, spirit of staying warm, <laughs> thank you. I guess we're gonna go back to camp and start packing up. Yeah, it's kind of a bummer. We really wanted to tag uh, Eeyore tomorrow, but... It's supposed to be like 18 degrees tomorrow, which is stupid. <laughs> oh, it's still, it was a really nice hike today. Yeah, uh, old, and this is actually quite beautiful. Yeah. Old Goat Glacier was... Or Old Goat Waterfall was um, really pretty. We didn't see the glacier. We did see the start of the valley there. And that looked uh, pretty awesome. Might... But it would be really cool to do that scramble up on a really clear day. You could see all the way back down to... Uh, Spray lakes. Oh yeah, no doubt. Yeah. yeah, we did take the stream route back on the way out. It is a little bit nicer. It's not a huge difference, honestly. It's only a couple hundred meters of different trail, but it's walking right next to the stream, so it's definitely nicer. Then you have to walk along the road. That's not a big deal. Yeah. Oh, the crack in my windshield went the other direction now. Uh oh. Uh oh. Get it replaced. All right, well, we're going to warm up a little and then get everything packed up and uh, call it a trip, I guess. Thanks for coming along on <laughs> another Adventure Happy trip. Um, it's always an adventure. Yeah, certainly was this time around. So, yeah, it was a good time, though. Yeah, it was. It was nice to get out, for sure. Always is. All right. Well, take it easy, guys, and... Uh, We'll see you on the next one.